Welcome to the wise democracy pattern language. What is wise democracy? I'm sure many of you are interested and I will be interviewing Tom Attlee, the founder of the Co-Intelligence Institute based in Oregon in the United States. And also on this call, on this Zoom call is also Charles Blass who will be the facilitator in Fintorn. Now, before we start, I think it would be interesting to ask Tom about what is wisdom. It's, for me, wisdom is something very spiritual. Usually I think of some elders who decide how things should work out. But I think Tom has a different definition of wisdom. And Tom, please, can you tell us what is wise? What is wise democracy? Uh, how do you connect both? Right. In this case, I'm... And for the, for the sake of the Wise Democracy Project and its, its theory, I'm saying that wisdom is the capacity to take into account what needs to be taken into account for long-term broad benefit. Uh, and that's just one, it's, I actually have a page on my co-intelligence site. There's lots of people defining wisdom in many different ways, but this is a workable definition for working with democratic process. And it's like, how do you engage lots of people, lots of diverse people in you're helping you take into account what needs to be taken into account. That's the basic question. Uh, and so the whole Wise Democracy Project is based on engaging people, lots of people, different kinds of people in various ways to try taking into account what needs to be taken into account over and over and over as conditions change and all that. So that's, that's how those relate. Uh, and if we can, to the extent we can succeed in that, we will be doing more than just solving our problems and dealing with crises and all the rest. We will be able to take into, take into account things that are needed to create a better world in all the ways we want to do that. So that's the idea here. Um, there's also one thing I was thinking about. Why don't you say intelligent? Uh, yes, yeah, so I did lots of research in collective intelligence and collaborative intelligence, things like that. Uh, but it occurred to me one day that it, took collective intelligence to make the ovens at Auschwitz, uh, the people who made the ovens as a team, and they had to make very efficient ovens and all the rest, but I, very few people would call it wise. Uh, so intelligence can be very short term, can be very narrow interested, et cetera, and wisdom is not short term and narrow interested. It's expansive. It's inclusive of many different lives and longer term thinking and systemic thinking and all that. It's just a bigger picture kind of thinking. It has lots of similarities to intelligence, but it's just expanding all the different dimensions of intelligence to be bigger. Tom, now I helped you create this pattern language. And I think for many of the viewers here, they are, they are not familiar with the concept of pattern language. Could you say something about that? Um, <clears throat> Yeah, basically it's a, a pattern is a design principle and a pattern language is a bunch of interwoven design principles. And the pattern language idea was originated by uh, Christopher Alexander, an architect, designer, and a team that went around the world looking for communities that Alexander said had the quality that has no name, which he's since described as aliveness, spirit, wholeness, so it's like you walk into the community and go, whoa, this is, this is cool. It wouldn't be great to live here. Uh, so this, this team was trying to identify what makes these communities like that. And they came up with more than 253 of these design elements. You know, you need a, a large body of water nearby. You need light in a room. You need light coming from at least two sides, natural light coming from two sides. You sort of add these up and you go, oh, wow, yeah, I can see why this would make a difference. And each pattern can be manifested in many different ways. Uh, so it's not just here's an instruction, do X. It's here's something to take into account and figure out a way to do that. And so I'm going, we don't have a wise democracy. You know, we don't have anything remotely like a wise democracy. So how do we go about moving towards it? How do we do, you know, what sorts of things do we have to keep in mind as we build something that looks more and more and more like a wise democracy. And that's what this pattern language is. It is guidances for how to think about doing that. Uh, and attached to each one of the design principles, each one of these patterns is a bunch of methods, examples, you know, here's 
things that people have done on the ground or are doing on the ground that reflect this particular design principle. And you can learn from them, add your own, whatever. This is an exploratory space, but there's lots of work that have been done. The whole uh, wise democracy pattern language is based on you know, things that people are already doing. Uh, it's not just a wild idea. It's just <laughs> all the pieces are there. They haven't been put together in a way that could create a wise democracy, but all the pieces exist somewhere, someone doing something and someone understanding what's going on with this or that pattern. So I'm just trying to provide a framework to include lots of different really great life affirming initiatives that help people take into account what needs to be taken into account for long-term broad benefit. Uh, Tom, I think I suggest, why don't we just dig into the pattern language and go on to the website and go on to the pattern list. And then let's pick up, let's pick one pattern and you can maybe show how the pattern page is actually designed. So yeah. we can see. Before you do uh, that, before you do that, Martin, I want to, yeah. I want to cover two points of theory that are behind all of this. Okay. One is a very simple Venn diagram. Venn diagrams, most people are familiar with, they might not know the name, but overlapping circles. So that's a Venn diagram. And we have a Venn diagram with three overlapping circles representing democracy. So here we see these three dimensions of wise democracy. They're actually dimensions of all democracy. The red circle, red oval in this case, uh, represents power. The blue one represents participation and the yellow one represents wisdom or the intelligence or wisdom of the outcomes. Uh, and most commentaries on democracy talk about power is how is it distributed? You know, how is it concentrated? How is it balanced? All this kind of stuff. Uh, and more and more people are talking about participation. You know, who's involved, who's being excluded, you know, and there's an overlap, of course, between participation and power. Does do the people who participate have power? Is the power being exerted in a participatory way? Are people engaged in implementing things? All those are in the overlap. Uh, and I'm bringing this other dimension that not a lot of people, some people, but not a lot are talking about, which is once you have all that, what's the outcome like? Is it, is it actually generating good things for most of life over the long term or not. Uh, and so these three together, we imagine growing uh, from being very separate. The second picture is more like what it's now. There's not a lot of overlap between them uh, and power is definitely the bigger circle. So as a wise democracy grows, these all grow, these circles grow and overlap more and more and more until they're all overlapped and it's basically one thing. When any power that is exercised is wise and participatory, participation is wise and powerful and all that. So that's the vision. So that's one piece of our theory. Another background we call the prime directive. Uh, and the prime directive, um, the prime directive is as an instruction is to uh, evoke and engage the uh, wisdom and resourcefulness of the whole on behalf of the whole. Uh, and that's like, there's a whole article on the website about it, which Martin is, is showing you right now. Uh, but it's like the whole community, the whole situation, the whole is a very important concept in this. And there's lots of writing uh, in here to describe what the whole is. Uh, but you want to, there's this assumption that there is wisdom and capacity buried in the whole of things. And we are going to access it. We're going to bring it forth. We're gonna bring it to life. And that wisdom and resourcefulness of the whole is what is going to decide what happens, what is gonna implement whatever is decided. Uh, that's what we're going for. And we want whatever is coming out like that, that we are helping to, uh, to come out and to get activated whatever's coming out of that is going to benefit the whole. So this is the, the whole and wholeness is like a living thing that is going to do this work. And we're all part of that. All of us with our partial viewpoints, all of us with our various capacities and incapacities, we're all a piece of that 
larger picture that is described in the this fundamental principle we call the prime directive. So these are two pieces of theory that inform and underlie all the patterns. Uh, so. Now, before we go into the patterns, I think it would be great to hear Charles Glass, who will be at the Pindhorn uh, himself. Uh, could you say something, uh, Charlie, why this pattern language is relevant for the theme of the conference? Thanks, Martin, and thanks, Tom. Yeah, well, so the workshop is titled Why is Participatory Governance? Uh, and so, of course, we're, we're basing it around this uh, particular tool set, the pattern language. I think we're exploring, uh, we're kind of inter, interweaving the, the inquiry uh, and the, the imperative, the objectives of Climate Change and Consciousness Conference and kind of global network efforts that consciousness uh, in all its forms or however you want to, to come at, at understanding that it's central and it's critical to how um, well humans in particular must deal with, with climate related shifts. And there are some guiding principles, not to get into all 10 of them, but Tom actually was involved in helping evolve a handful of these. And the, the three concluding ones I think are key in terms of the, the really big picture. In other words, it's not just a a one-week gathering at an eco-village in Scotland, but it, it really it has intentions to, to continue growing and accelerating and um, uh, linking communities and initiatives and networks. Um, and so uh, number eight is that the outcome be, of the gathering be the creation of networks of innovation and communities of inspired action. Number nine is that these networks and community initiatives be seeded before the conference begins. And there are some efforts there now already, um, as we're talking just leading into the conference on this video. Um, and number 10 is that they be effectively supported to grow and flourish after the conference ends in order to accelerate the generation of sustainable life-serving responses to climate change. Mm -hmm. So these are, these are very bold objectives. And um, there are, again, some, 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 some great um, uh, initiatives and, and projects and so forth everywhere. Um, and so I, I think that this wise democracy pattern language can be a great tool to support uh, all of these kind of efforts. And so, yeah, I hope that that can provide some, some context. Yeah. It is trying to take into account what needs to be taken into account for long-term broad benefit. I mean, it fits that, that definition pretty well. Yeah, okay. absolutely. It's a huge undertaking and, the, the, you know, on the one sense, the pressure's on, but at, this, at the same time, you know, there's a lot to, to celebrate and to be inspired about. And I think this can shed a lot of light. Okay. To be mindful of, of the time, of the short time we have, uh, let's uh, dive into the pattern language and just take this first one. It's called Metabolizing Polarization. And Tom, can you describe the page? Yeah, well, the first, the first thing is the image, which as lots of work went into choosing images that would sort of communicate the essence of what the pattern is about. Uh, and underneath the image is a, what we call the heart, which is a 50 to 60 word uh, description of the pattern, the essence of the pattern, which is sometimes simple to understand, sometimes very dense. Um, but here in this pattern, the idea is these these people or groups are very separate from each other. They are thinking of each other as the other. Uh, they're acting as if there's only two ways to look at the world, the ideology or the or a situation, you know, pro-life, pro-choice, liberal, conservative, whatever, all those binary kinds of frames. And they're kind of designing themselves to be mutually exclusive. This pattern is about recognizing that that's a falsehood, that's an illusion. You know, there's always more than two sides. There's not even sides, there's different perspectives. And so metabolize, metabolizing in biology is taking apart the food uh, in such a way that it can be useful. So we're gonna take apart the things that these people think are opposites and we're going to digest them. We're going to find the useful material in that. Uh, and so that's what that is. And underneath you see some related patterns. So. This pattern language has, you know, 96 different patterns. And we're going, if you want to work on this pattern, if you want to do work in this realm of metabolizing polarization, these are other things, all concerns addressed, feeling heard. I mean, you can feel why 
those things would tend to help you metabolize polarization. And then underneath the related patterns, there is a set of questions that you can use to explore it. You know, when it feels like they're just two sides to an issue and that they're mutually exclusive and opposed to each other, is that always true? What's going on there? So it's an invitation into exploring the essential dynamic that this pattern is about. There's many other questions you could follow, but that's what this, this is giving you several you can work with. And then up in the upper corner of, the, uh, of this, the, there's a video introduction where I talk about what's going on with this heart, what's going on with this pattern, uh, and then underneath that. And that um, Martin transcribed and I edited, so there's a whole article, the Going Deeper article is basically a, uh, a digestion and edit of the of things that are in the, the, um, the video. And then I give a bunch of resources. Here, if you want to work on this pattern, here are some examples and methods you can work with. Let's see the pattern card has a number of these elements on it also, and the whole set of cards, which you can download a copy for free to print if you want, or you can download, or you can order a box of the, of the pattern cards and work in a group uh, with the cards. If you would pick a pattern in regards to consciousness and climate change, which pattern would you pick? Uh, it's actually related to the one I was just talking about, the, uh, which is to me, one of the core patterns, both the earlier version and the new version. It's called using diversity and disturbance creatively. And when everything's the same and stable, there's a, you know, you sort of ride along with it. Uh, and there's a, there's a lack of creativity in that. It's very comfortable, but you don't have to do anything particularly about it. At the point you get diversity, there's challenge built into diversity and there's challenge built into disturbance. And usually people are trying to reduce the diversity. This is getting too much. I can't take it. Uh, where they're trying to reduce the disturbance. It's like the, the discomfort causes them to try and push it down. And in, in the wise democracy theory, the emergence of diver diversity as a resource. Diver have, if, you wanna, if you want to take into account what needs to be taken into account, if you want to get the picture of the whole, you want to engage the whole, you need to engage diversity. Diversity is a fabulous resource. And disturbance is filled with information. You know, you get a pain in your side, that pain is telling you something's wrong, pay attention. You get a bunch of people marching in the street, you know, there's something wrong, pay attention. You know, uh, the climate is going bonkers, something's wrong, pay attention. You know, and how sophisticated can you get at picking out the information from the smaller signals before they get uproariously wild? Uh, how can you take the the hints of, disturb, of disturbance uh, and use them creatively early enough so that you don't get into crises. You have little problems that are solved quickly, you know, and to use it creatively. Here's disturbance. What's the diversity involved? Who are the different perspectives? What are the different uh, things that are being talked about? How can we weave them together to create a new way of doing things that doesn't have this disturbance anymore? So again, this is, this is universally applicable. Any situation you find yourself in, this is a really powerful thing. And there's a whole pile of resources to use in helping use you know, diversity and disturbance creatively. And climate change is just, it's one of a half dozen, you know, these are existential issues that could totally wipe us out. Uh, the earlier we take into account what needs to be taken into account, the better our chances of coming out the other end. But, you know, as people are commenting, we didn't, we didn't take, we didn't pay attention when the signals were small. Uh, we wait till the signals are bigger and bigger and bigger and system dynamics suggest that's not wise. By the time they're big enough for everybody to gather around, it could easily be too late. So this is saying, pick it up early, you know, learn how to do this and climate change is, you know, Now's the time we're really, we've either passed or are very close to major tipping points. Uh, and to do this well now 
is demanded. Now, Tom, the latest work of Andy Pace in, in a borough in London uh, was very much inspired by the pattern language. And maybe, Tom, you can say a few things about that. Thanks. Yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's interesting because an awful lot, I'm realizing an awful lot of, since the patterns come from real life things that are already happening, there's many applications that come that are inspired by those real life things. They're not explicitly, oh, I'm gonna do this because it's part of the pattern language. Uh, the inclusion of diverse voices, the phrase whole system in the room, we have a pattern whole system in the conversation. And that is derived from an awful lot of public engagement and stakeholder engagement activity. Uh, but that principle was used very consciously by Andy uh, when like one of the things, one of the aspects he did both, he did multimedia stuff, which is another one of our patterns. Uh, he did both face-to-face -face conversations and an online uh, thing called Paul List that engages people in offering their ideas about something and other people agree or disagree with those ideas and it generates you know, emerging consensus and stuff like that. Uh, but in the process of getting like a thousand people to participate in that, he had people going to malls and libraries and stuff because the regular announcements they gave only reached certain people. And so they were going, who are we missing? You know, that question of who else should be part of the conversation was very much in Andy's mind while he was designing these engagements. So it covers the, you know, there's a lot of patterns, a diversity pattern and other patterns that this covers. But that principle was very solid and he understood why he was doing it. It was not a rote exercise. Uh, it was very much trying to cover the ground, trying to get the whole or people, peoples whose perspectives represented the whole which you never get. And it's part of it also is being humble and you could always do who else. And you always need more time and resources to get the additional people and perspectives. So there's a dance, a dance there. But he danced well with the principles that were in the pattern language and had some considerable success. It seems that each pattern is a Netflix show in itself. So you could make 96 a series of 96 films on each basically about uh, based on the pattern language uh, which i find really intriguing but at the at the same time it seems really overwhelming so i'm really wondering if you if somebody wants to work with this without getting overwhelmed how how do you suggest to start or to work in groups who are working on a campaign there's many different ways to do that, a bunch of them are described on the, uh, in the box that you get, a little booklet that comes with the, uh, the box of pattern cards. Uh, and on the website, there's a whole section of the website about that. Um, but one, the, first of all, the fact that it's cards, that we present it as cards, lends itself to modular group activity, individual, small group, big group. You don't have to confront the cards, the group confronts the cards. Uh, so if you have 10 people in your group, you're going to give them nine or 10 uh, copies of, you know, you're going to distribute like you're going to play a card game, you know, deal out the cards. Everybody's got nine or 10 cards in their hands. And then whatever your situation is, say you're organizing a conference like Charlie and his, and his friends are. So look, you just have everybody with their, the cards in their hand. You say, when you think about the challenge of what we're doing, uh, look at the cards in your hand and see if there's something you think we should prioritize, we should really pay attention to at this point. And people, hands go up, say, okay, Joe, what's your, what's your thought? And they read the card, read the, the description of the card and the heart. And then either you can just leave it at that and have people go, oh yeah, let's pay attention to that. Or you can have a discussion at that point. Let's talk about that. And you can work your way through it. And if you wanted to, people could be individually or in teams, could go to the pattern page and delve into, here's a bunch of resources we could use to effectively pay attention to this at this time. So it is gigantic, but it's sort of like, you know, any field, it's its, its own field. It's like biology or politics or whatever. There's mass amounts of information. Uh, this thing is woven together. So one of the things, if you wanna pay attention to a particular pattern, 
there are other patterns you need to pay attention to. Some of them are listed. Seven of them are listed on every card, but there's many others that could be connected. And that tells you both ideas and resources you should have in mind and people who are working on those other patterns are important for you to have relationships with, to be part of your network, because without them, you're not gonna be able to do your pattern. So it's, it's, it covers lots of different grounds, but you can start anywhere because it's the prime, all, every pattern addresses the prime directive. Each piece of the prime directive that you use uh, connects to the whole prime directive. They're, they're um, fractal or, or um, what's it called? The whole, not holonic. What's the, the laser makes the picture that the part contains the whole, uh, what's that? Holographic? Holographic, yeah. They're holographic in the sense that each pattern contains all the other patterns, is connected to all the other patterns. So there's a way in which you can specialize in one, you can do an exercise like I just described, you can lay it out on the ground and just, feel the vibe and pick one, <laughs> you know, uh, sort of like an oracle, you know, tarot cards or something. There's all sorts of ways to use it, uh, but they all lead to each other and to the prime directive. Uh, and all of them contribute. Once you s get a sense of the whole thing, they all contribute to developing a wise democracy. Even if you're not consciously part of a program to develop a wise democracy, if you do your work within the context of this thing and are aware of how you, your place in this thing, uh, you end up contributing to that trajectory. Thank you for your uh, introduction, Tom. I, and I hope for you viewers, this was uh, intriguing and um, bye-bye.